Good evening. I'm Tom Wittick, and welcome to a special edition of Ridgecrest Talk. Tonight we present a very important message from YouTube sensation Iraq veteran 8888. We were granted permission from Eric to air this video. Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here of Moss Pond and Gun. We have another gun review for you today. Very obscure rifle. As you guys know, we've been known to, uh, to deal with a couple of obscure guns on our channel. This is a... Uh, it's basically a modern uh, copy of the Now, uh, for those of you that aren't old enough to remember or weren't there or just don't know about it, uh, the it was used extensively by the Navy SEALs in Vietnam. It's kind of sobering, isn't it, guys, to think that if Obama has his way, that your YouTube videos could look just like you saw in the intro there. Kind of hard to do a gun review where we can't show the gun or really talk about the gun, you know. The wording in this new ITAR regulation that's uh, in the Federal Register right now is, uh, is so ambiguous. I mean, that, that could be what you guys see, you know, blurred out guns. We can't really say what the caliber is even. We have to leave it up to you to figure it out. That could be consider, uh, construed as a technical detail under these new uh, regulations that are pro uh, probably going to come down, you know, with the stroke of a pen, you know, from the president's office. So. That's right. It's scary, guys. Uh, in case you're wondering what we're talking about, there are you know, basically a reinterpretation of the ITAR regulations that are on, you know, Obama's desk right now. And of course, you know that he's the kind of guy that just takes a pen and just writes in whatever he wants. And he pretty much, you know, rules with the iron pen, so to speak. So it's, it's very ambiguous to say the least. But what I'm going to encourage all of you guys to do, I want you to check out the links below from Truth About Guns, NRA. Um, I had a talk with uh, Tim over at Military Arms Channel earlier. We've been in communication about this issue. Uh, Tommy from TN Outdoors 9, mm -hmm. both great guys. I want to give a shout out to them. So, you know, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this, but I don't want to get into a ton of, you know, actual fat on this issue because uh, the Federal Register has a lot of very complicated uh, jargon in it, okay? And we're not going to try to claim to be legal experts. We're not going to claim to be, you know, experts in digesting this jargon and trying to make sense of it. But Obama has been known for making all of his gestures very ambiguous and open-ended. And the way this whole ITAR thing reads, in case you guys don't know, ITAR deals in export regulations, okay? International trafficking of arms regulations, mm -hmm. okay? So with ITAR, Generally, what you're going to see is stuff that is involved in like the defense industry. So let's say the military has some fancy FLIR technology or some uh, fancy night vision device or a thermal device or a missile. Actually, it goes or, a little bit deeper than that. You know, it's something it's, like it's that. very broad spectrum because the first uh, you know, article in ITAR regulations is firearms. And that includes anything up to and including 50 caliber, 12.7 millimeter. Right. Um, things above 12.7 millimeter are in a category called guns and those are like your artillery pieces such as that but then as eric mentioned you know night vision devices FLIR units thermal imaging all that sort of stuff there is all uh put into another category mm -hmm. military vehicles tanks uh support equipment all that stuff is under itar regulations but the the thing that is troubling about what's what's in the news right now is the changes to the definitions of technical data export re-export and that really, they're adding the internet in there and uh, they're changing, they're wanting to change the uh, definition of technical data to include um, just everyday details that you or I or Eric or anybody shares about guns. I mean, if we do a gun review, we're gonna show you maybe how to disassemble it. That is maybe a, a new part of technical data. Yeah, or like a know? trigger job or take it, even just taking it apart. Uh, if I do a how-to video on how to field strip your Smith & Wesson Model tw uh, 29 like Ray did the other day, that could be considered something that is a no-no under these uh, proposed ITAR uh, regulations. So the big issue is that this, this whole ITAR thing was around before the internet was. So it really pains me to think of it this way, but these people have a think tank, guys. They sit around and they go, all right, well, we can't do it this way. We can't go after the Second Amendment this way. So how else can we do it? And then some guy lifts his hand and goes, well, there is that ITAR thing. Oh, okay, well, how are we going to you know, go about that? So then they come up with this way, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to go about it the First Amendment route. We're going to go against freedom of speech and the Second Amendment all in one go. So it's really a double whammy, guys, because 
what they're basically proposing is to put a muzzle on people like us. Imagine your favorite YouTuber, your favorite blogger, anybody that writes about anything online related to firearms. Imagine all of that free information that you get and that free entertainment, all that stuff you get and you know and you love. People like us will not, be the way the dodo. Not only online, but you know, the wording is so ambiguous it could include magazine publications, newspaper publications, shotgun news, guns and ammo, Be Ready magazine. I mean, it, it could go that deep, yeah. but we don't know. It's just the, the wording in these, the, you know, these new regulations is so ambiguous it could include a broad spectrum of, uh, of new, new things that no one's even thought about yet. Stay tuned. More to come from Eric and Chad when we come back. Welcome back. We continue now with more from Eric and Chad. But wait, Chad, there's light at the end of the tunnel, though. Now, they do say that if you put together a uh, piece of content or something, you can request approval from, from the, the State, State Department, Department. To, uh, to put the piece of content in question to publish it. So, wait a minute. So you mean a government that's already busy as heck, understaffed, over regular, you know, the, like we discussed in other videos, this internal regulation that they seemingly impose on themselves, this constant flowing reinterpretation of what's already there. You know, how are we going to, you know, enact these policies? How are we going to enforce these policies? So you mean to tell me the people that can't already keep things in order that they've already got on their plate are going to take on a gargantuan task like that? So you mean like 10,000 inquiries per month related to the publication of this type of content that they're going to have, they're going to hire a crew of people whose job it is to go through and make sure that stuff is kosher to post. Guys, you know, Tim and I were talking about it earlier, and he seems to think, we seem to think collectively, that there could be some grandfathering in place. So if they, if they did get away with it, let's hope they don't, uh, that content like ours that's already in existence would not be tampered with and we would be sort of grandfathered in. That's still a scary prospect, though. So to have to ask for permission just to post a video on YouTube? Yeah, see, the thing with that is that gets into First Amendment rights. I mean, because if, if we want to talk about a gun, I mean, we're not really divulging technical details about the firearm. We're not showing, you know, blueprints or schematics or anything like that. We're not showing a 3D model of the gun or like, you know, oh, well, you know, uh, for an Eagle or for a, for a CAD, uh, you know, file, just click, click the link, here, yeah. link below, you know, and you can print it at home on your 3D printer. But yep. see, that's what uh, the truth about guns was mainly referring to initially was... Great guys over there, by the way. You know... All right, so just let me let me give you a little bit of an excerpt here. Um, the proposed changes seem to be pointed squarely at online exchanges, which include technical specifications, gun reviews, schematics, 3D printing programs, and training, uh, self-defense tip series, and other articles. Uh, it seems that a pretty blatant attack on the First Amendment as a workabout to stifle the Second to me. And that's, you know, from the truth about guns. And that's exactly what it is, but... It's a workaround. Now, software is now a defense article, okay, under these new ITAR regulations if they go through. Uh, encryption programs like TrueCrypt, as well as 3D models of firearms would fall into this category. And then we mentioned technical data. Uh, technical data is redefined to include anything related to the development, production, operation, installation, maintenance, repair, overhaul, or refurbishing. Things that you have seen on the channel how-to videos, gunsmithing videos, anything right. associated with Ray that we do to a gun is pretty much uh, uh, considered technical data at this point. All of which are free. Very you much. don't pay anything for that. You, I mean, that's a free service that we provide for you guys because we, we like to have a well-diversified channel that shows a wide spectrum of gun ownership. And that's everything from the mental aspects of defense to concealed carry to gun reviews to gunsmithing to reloading. I mean under the, and this is probably something we haven't even considered all day, but under these proposed ITAR regulations, all of the, you know, caliber specific reloading videos could also be mm -hmm. to some degree uh, put in check. And it's, it's, it's very, very hard to think 
that everything that I've worked hard for for this channel and all the other great channels out there, you got guys like Hickok, you got TN Outdoors 9, you got Military Arms Channel, you got 22 Plankster over there, you got Suits Double O. Guys, there, you know, I know I left people out, but there are a ton of awesome YouTube channels out there who really love instructing and teaching and sharing what they do in their gun world with you guys, and it's free. And that's one thing that I've always liked um, about YouTube is that it allows me to kind of put this stuff out there and know that I've got my audience there that's willing to kind of take it in and check it out. And it's and I, I pride myself on the fact that it's free, you know, and mm -hmm. it's um, it's a slippery slope, guys. Um, so what we want to do with this video, we want to make sure you understand this is very serious. If you like watching gun content on YouTube, guys, it's not even about me. It's not even about my channel. It's about all gun related content on the Internet, period. It's not even YouTube, it's not the writers, it's not the bloggers, it's not the magazine publications. Guys, it's everything. It's right. how you access information. Take, take this into consideration real quick. A thought just popped in my head about um, the correlation between the huge uh, increase in the gun industry in the past you know, several years, maybe three, four years. I mean, we've seen a you know, several hundred percent increase in, in the traffic in the gun industry, the interest in the gun industry, companies popping up all over the place to meet demand for product out there. More and more people, more and more women and kids getting into firearms every day. They need information. Now, now do you think that there's a correlation between the social media outlets that have been growing, such as us, other YouTube pages, you know, real popular blogs, Instagram, even just social media in general, the internet connecting everyone together has had a huge part in that and you know for the president to at the stroke of a pen sign something into law by executive order bypassing the congress in order to stifle an entire industry overnight that's that's smart you know he's not a dumb man don't forget that don't forget that the man isn't stupid. He's very intelligent. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's and, also got a team of cronies peddling in this stuff to him. But there, there's no, there, there, there is a certain correlation between those, those two items. You know, the, the social media boom, the internet boom uh, in, in firearms, and the growth of gun owners across the country. Stay tuned for more when we return. Thanks for staying with us. And now back to Eric and Chad. They know yeah. that people like us are the future of how you're going to interact with, obtain, and access information related to firearms. They know it. They're trying to snuff something before it gets even larger. Imagine where channels like ours and some of the other large ones on YouTube will be 5, 10, 15 years from now. We'll still be doing this because it makes sense to us. We enjoy it and it's, it's just it's what we do. So they know that if they can stuff it away, and make it a non-issue, it's gonna make information harder to obtain. Think about guys like us who put all these gun gripes out there that educate you on things that are happening. Look at the open carry thing we did with Texas. We helped get, in some small part, we did our part in helping getting uh, open carry passed in Texas. Now do you think if it weren't for people like us shouting from the mountaintops for everybody to hear, do you think that as many ears would have heard it and made it happen? No, and they know that. They can't, they know that they can't get guns like they want in terms of banning certain guns. They know they can't go after the ammo. So the next logical step is to go after how people access information about these things. See, information is power and they know that. They know that you are empowered by being well informed and kept in good communication with people that are like-minded. If they remove that communication and keep us in the dark about things, it's easier for them to have their way with us from a political standpoint. And guys, it's not just this that's going on. There's 12 other executive orders that are being considered that are on Obama's desk right now. One of them involves a reclassification of pistol. So high they want powered pistols. High power pistols. Possibly, so see, but but yeah. the thing is that that is really weird because the the, the uh, Federal Register article that the um, the the new rulemaking uh, change kind of opened up is dated back to 2005. So it doesn't really make any sense. There's really nothing out there yet right. on the actual reclassification of a high-powered pistol, which it, it could come to pass, it could not, but there's there's also right. an executive order out there, you know, maybe re regulatory change related to firearm storage. 
Yeah, right. I so, mean, so you that's know? that's what we're trying to make sure we you know we make you guys understand is that it's not just ITAR. It's this you know gun storage proposal that we don't know what it's about yet. There's this reclassification of pistols, any other number of things. So guys, we have to keep our ear to the ground because the bottom line, I'm going to leave you with this, is we don't want this video to be long. Obama's on the way out. Okay, he knows he's on the way out, and he's like a little temper tantrum, red-headed stepchild clawing at the doors on the way out, you know, not wanting to let go of that power, and he wants to do everything he can before he leaves the White House it's, to ensure. It's nothing that we haven't seen in any other lame duck presidency. I mean, you've got a, a Republican-controlled House and Senate, and you've got a democratically controlled presidency. Yep. That's a lame duck, you know, when really nothing is getting done. You know, yep. the president's veto and everything the, that the Congress sends up, you know, everything that he sends down, they're like, yeah, whatever. You and know? then he's just signing everything he wants away with a stroke of the pen. Guys, it's very serious, okay? Not just for the whole YouTube, and, and it's not even about, it's, it's, it's a larger issue than just guns, than just YouTube, than just all the things that we collectively have an interest in, you know, us as, you know, the people putting this information out and you guys as the viewers, it's, it's, it's a, it's a big stab at everybody, no matter who you are. I mean, when you start getting to Obamacare and the NSA and all this mess, guys, it goes even deeper. Okay. So it, it makes me angry because it's an attack on your first amendment rights and your second amendment rights. And worse, it's an attack at your second amendment rights through your first amendment rights. So it's, it's a double whammy, guys, and it's literally a punch in the face. I might as well get punched in the face right now because that's literally all it is. It's like, oh, you, bam, whatever. It doesn't matter. So what we want and what this video is about is kind of a call to action. I want you guys to contact your representatives, all of them, state level, you know, local level, anybody that will listen. You need to contact them. You need to complain. Now, there's going to be a link in the description box below where you can submit a comment. You've got to get on there and comment, guys. So when this M855 thing was going through, they, I think they submitted like over 90,000 comments. And last the ATF time I went, checked, yeah, yeah, the last and, time I checked, it was over 90,000. Yeah, and the ATF went, uh, we're just going to do this later. So if you <clears> make it, make your voice heard and let them get that overwhelming response they need. Guys, the comment uh, period on this thing ends August 3rd. So literally, it's like if we don't get some comments in right now, we got to get the word out. You got to tell everybody you know. If you like watching free content online, if you like learning stuff for free, being entertained for free, if you like watching these YouTube videos, you might want to take a minute to write a quick comment, write a letter, submit it to as many people that'll listen. Guys, this is serious. Yep, and there'll be a link in the in the description box as well to the article in the Federal Register that pertains to the new ITAR regulations that are uh, up for proposed change. Um, you're going to have a direct link to, I believe, the email address to send your comment to, plus the website where you can find more information on Truth About Guns article. Pretty much everything that's out there right now on this will be in the description box below. So, you know, put your thinking caps on, get yourself yep. some coffee, whatever your drink of choice is, sit down and have a little read for a little while and educate yourself. Yeah, guys, please don't take our word for it because there's a lot of very odd wording in the, uh, you know, in the registry. Uh, guys, it's a lot of stuff to take in. Take your time, read through it, gather a logical decision. Don't, don't write a letter when you're mad, you know. Take your time and come up with a nice, logical, concise, you know, letter, okay? Like, you know, so put it together, guys. You know, we want to put this content out there. We want you guys to get gun reviews and fun stuff. And, you know, everything that we're known for doing is at stake. Uh, if, if, if everything's taken literally to the context of the changes and they push it to the umpteenth degree of, you know, the letter of the law, mm. I mean, so what? They're going to they're gonna, uh, write me up on 882 counts. Well, see, the you problem I mean? is <laughs> the old public domain that ITAR dealt in initially was, you know, libraries, books, paper, you know, publications, right. um, things that you had to go to a facility to access, okay? Well, the internet is everywhere. You don't have to go to a facility. Your facility is right there in your house. It's right here on your phone. It, it, it's free information and it's out there on the airwaves for anybody and everybody to look at, you know, and have access to. That's where they don't like it because they're not in control of that information. It's, it's one thing for them to go after your guns, after your ammo, try to regulate the items themselves. But guys, when they start trying to talk about regulating information, 
Guys, that is extremely serious. Serious problem. Not just gun related, but any information. Anytime the government tries to control the dissemination of any information, scary business, guys. I mean, look at North Korea, look at China, where they are highly regulated. There's things that you'll never be able to, I mean, Google won't even pull it up. You know, that they won't even allow their citizens to see certain things. And I, I just, it's really scary for me to think that, so what, one day you're gonna go to Google and look up uh, I don't know, a review from your, your favorite YouTuber, and then nothing. White noise. Pretty scary. S scary prospect, guys. Thanks for watching. I know this video was a little bit on the long side, but we wanted to kind of give our input on this, you know, kind of what we think initially. Um, th our opinion could change over time as more information becomes available, and more of that information is kind of analyzed and, uh, and everything. Uh, I'm not going to name any names or anything, but there's already been a couple of major players in the gun industry that we've sort of talked to that have uh, gotten legal counsel to kind of look it over, and you know, there, there's kind of a mixed bag of opinion. So as more of those things begin to uh, kind of get out there, we may rehash this video yeah. as more information becomes available. Right now, the word on the street is, you know, it, it could go either way, the way that it's worded. So that's how they like it. You know? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Teaser GNTV would like to thank both Eric and Chad for allowing us to air this special video. The links described in the video will be available on our website as well. I encourage everyone that believes in our First and Second Amendment rights, get involved. Let this administration know that we do not want them to strip our fundamental rights that our founding fathers established. Thank you and good night.